listening to PetLifeRadio.com. You've had a long day at work, and you can't wait to just get home, take off your shoes, plop yourself down in your favorite chair, and relax. Ah. You walk up to your tranquil residential home and your neatly manicured lawn in your quiet suburban neighborhood, put the key in the lock, open the door, and... Yes, the pets have gone wild! What were you thinking? Welcome to the show about everything you always wanted to know about exotic pets. Where to get them, what to feed them, and how to care for them. You'll even find out why some people live with a monkey. Now, here's your host, exotic pet expert and author, Bob Tart. Hey, Bob, what were you thinking? Hi, this is Bob Tart, author of the books Enslaved by Ducks and Fall Weather. And I am here in our dining room with uh, some noisy birds, including Hoshi, who is responding to the uh, bird clock. Hey, Hoshi. And, of course, with my wife, Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi. In our last episode, I talked about the mink attack. Uh, We think it's a mink attack we had when uh, the river flooded. And I briefly mentioned Linda uh, making a discovery on the river. And in case you did not hear that episode... I won't tell you right now uh, what she discovered. I will let her tell you. I'll let her tell you what happened. So, what what happened on that day, Linda, when you went into the flooded woods? Well, it was a Sunday afternoon. What was that? Three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. It's a Sunday afternoon, about three something in the afternoon. I decided to take a walk down to the river. Uh, everything had been upset up here because of that mink and the animals, and I was upset. Bob was upset. So I thought that would be a good to get a breath of air. I'd go down to the river. So I walked down to the river, and when I got down the river, I turned left, and you could walk just so far because it was flooded past a certain point. I had my binoculars with me, and I walked to this kind of peninsula, and I stopped, of course, because I couldn't walk any farther. And I was just scanning across the treetops, looking to see if I could see any birds, and suddenly I saw this crow's nest. I thought, oh, neat, a crow's nest. I was looking at that. And all of a sudden, in the midst of the crow's nest, there was this huge paw. It it was just very clearly a paw. And it had the little pads, like the bottom of some, it's just huge, with pads. And then for a brief second, I thought, oh, maybe this is some kind of predatory bird, like an eagle's nest, and they've cut the foot off of something or something. That That was what hit me at first. Then all of a sudden, I came to this very striking realization that what I was looking at that I thought was a crow's nest was actually the curled up body of a bear. (laughs) It was a real live bear. It was asleep. I didn't see the face. But the more I looked at this, uh, what I thought was sticks and branches, etc., was thick, blackish-brown fur. And this paw that I thought was disconnected to this was actually connected to the body of this animal. So I've never seen anything like this before. I was totally terrified, thunderstruck, shocked, whatever. I just stood there, and I just backed up out of there as slow as I could. I didn't break out in a run. I didn't want to disturb him. I just very quickly uh, just walked back to the house, and I got by. I said, sweetie, you won't believe this, but I think there's a bear down on the river. So he got... He came back I with me. I didn't believe it. I, so I he said, figured it was be something a raccoon. else. Yeah, he figured it yeah, out. Like Linda said, there isn't any raccoon that big. Yeah, it's just like I knew that was not a raccoon. I knew it was not a raccoon. It was too big. It was as big as a crow's nest, which is quite large. So back we went. He looked at it through the binoculars. He agreed. He says, yeah, that looks like a bear. So we were kind of going, you know, we, we were not talking loud because we didn't want to wake it up. But we weren't really close to it. It was uh, close as I ever close as, get. Yeah, it was pretty close, <laughs> believe me. It was about, what would we say, 50 yards away? Yeah. Something like that. It was about 25 feet up in the tree, curled up in a ball, sleeping. And that's, uh, and we didn't go back there again that day. I don't think either one of us did. But I did come back and call Peg Markle, the lady that has a wildlife rescue center. And I asked her if she would call the DNR people and have them come with a tranquilizing dart and put it, make it uh, go to sleep, take it up north somewhere. Because they did that last year They've with done that. In, in Grand Rapids. We should mention we're in Grand Rapids and we're far, 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 far south of the normal range of bears in Michigan. Yeah, we're about 20 minutes away from Grand Rapids east. Yeah, and they just, I mean, bears don't live in Typically, this area. you don't see, although... Um, 
Virgins is what, a couple miles away? There's a street called Virgins that one was sighted over there a few, I don't know, weeks or months ago, and somebody hit one with a car over on some street. Was oh, that it's probably this year, six though? miles. I don't know if that was last year or this year. So they're, they are around. A couple every year manage to wend their way down the Grand River. But uh, we've never seen one we've in our... We've never. Not in our we backyard. Got, no. We've, we got married in 1990. We have never, ever seen anything like that. 1990? Huh? We've been married that long? Yes, we have. <laughs> so, uh, so you call it Peg. It was the shock of my life. And I, I just want to add that two weeks before this time, I am not psychic or anything like that whatsoever. But I did have a dream two weeks before this time that a bear was chasing geese in our yard. So yeah, really for whatever weird. that's worth, I did dream that. And I've never had a dream like that before. Yeah. So I remember Pretty so, weird. So you call Peg, and Peg is, she is the uh, director of Wildlife Rehab Center in Grand Rapids. And she said, yeah, I am the person you are supposed to call. And what else did she tell you? And she was going to um, try to contact Dave, somebody or other that would. Dave Rogers. Yes, Dave Rogers. DNR. Yeah. And uh, she said she had been trying to reach him on some other issue that weekend, and she hadn't been able to get hold of him. I never did hear back from them. But I'm, I felt kind of guilty because I never called the police or anything. But I didn't want him to be shot. And I was afraid that's what would happen if I called the police. Although the Lowell police are not there on the weekend. You have to call the Grand Rapids police. So no one would have come out anyways, I don't think. So the but, next day? So the next call? day in the morning, I did call the Lowell police. And I got the dispatcher lady. And she was interested, of course. But I didn't get the impression she was going to do anything about it. And by that time, I, I went back there the next morning. And he was long gone. And I was told that they travel 15 miles a day. And I was told by Peg Markle that this is a time of year when they are just following along the river just fishing for fish, clams, um, crayfish, anything like that. They're not really trying to bother anybody. They're terrified of people. Um, maybe grizzly bears wouldn't be, but this was probably a brown bear. So I, mm -hmm. I figure he's long gone. But every time I look in the woods now, I see, you know, I'm looking for dark forms all the time now. Yeah, it's funny because um, we take a walk in our woods almost every day of the week when the weather's nice, wouldn't you say, or darn close to it. Yeah. And I've never gone in there expecting to see anything that might eat us. And yeah. so it, it changes your consciousness. It Let's does. put it that it way. It does. I mean, the worst that's ever happened, and it wasn't even bad, was a couple of years ago I walked back down our neighbor's driveway and I was suddenly confronted by two large dogs. And they were by... You that know, was scary enough. That was scary enough because, you know, you don't know what you're going to find when you see two large dogs. And they just stopped and started barking. But usually when they stop and bark at you like that, you know they're, they're afraid. Just tentative. And I took one step forward and they left. Yeah. But, um, you know, now I think we're always going to wonder a little yeah. bit when we go into you the woods. just wonder. Remember that year we went on vacation to Carper Harbor in the UP. We saw three bear cubs. And the whole rest of that trip... I, I just had it in my mind. I was scanning the woods and every place I looked, looking for the forms of bears. And yeah. there's just something about seeing something like that. It gets into you and you start thinking about it and anticipating it in some kind of weird way like you might see it again. Yeah, I remember the day after you showed me the bear and for a couple of days after that. I would look out the window <laughs> here in the dining room and I'd see just a boulder that's been there forever. And I would just instantly, when I first saw it, I would think, yeah. is that the bear crouch down there? That's the same. Th I saw that same rock and felt the same thing. And when we had those huge spiders in the woods a couple years ago um, called Fisher spiders, forevermore after that, I think even now, when I look on the barks of those trees, no matter what the season, maybe not winter, but in spring, summer, and fall, I expect to see one of those spiders because I did see them one time, or more than one, yeah, one time. So we saw them up by the house and back there on the bark of a tree. And um, it just is something that gets in your mind and your feelings and you think about it. Yep. And a friend of mine who lives in, uh, I think, Arlington, Virginia, in the Washington, D.C. area, he was telling me that uh, his wife uh, recently saw a coyote just three blocks from the school where the kids go to. So it makes me think we ought to be a little bit more watchful when we go for a walk in the woods. Brian even said maybe you ought to carry a walking stick or something. I can see me swinging a walking stick <laughs> against a bear. That's going to do a lot of good. Well, don't they say that if you have something that makes a noise, like a can with a stone in yeah. it, or so, if you make something with a loud noise, they don't like that, and they will go away. Yep, yep. So okay. I'm sure they're more afraid of us than we are. Yep. Well, we have another topic uh, for this week's show. 
and this is about bird cleanup. So uh, this uh, may help you because, um, well, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, uh, the mess our birds make and maybe describe the dining room a little bit and the, you know, what we have in here. Well, we have a, a long room with cages all along th this wall with big windows there. So it's nice for the birds. They can look out, although I don't know if they do so much, but... It, it makes a lot of light in this room. So there's a long wall with windows, birds all along there. There's one, two, three, four, five cages along that window. Then there's another large cage against the other wall, and then another large cage against the opposite wall that holds our African greys. So it's basically a room crammed full with cages and a table, our kitchen table's on the other yeah, side. Yeah, you of can it. hardly get you in. You can't hardly walk around. Yeah, you can hardly way. get in to sit at the table yeah. and uh, have a meal no, because of in all a cage. the bird cages. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So consequently, with all these many birds, you've got seeds or and or feathers and or some kind of food item that the birds ate or didn't, I should say didn't eat, that they discarded. Yeah, parrot, on that floor. parrots love to throw things. Don't ask me. If anybody knows the reason why parrots love throwing things, let us know because we can't figure it out. Yeah, you would think that they must live in some area where food is of great abundance. I don't else, think that's true, probably. Yeah, so I don't know. So, you know, people can come and visit us a half hour after we've cleaned, and they can walk They'd in here. They'd never know. No, and they, they would never know. How many times do you think you clean a day? Well, after breakfast, um, after lunch, if I sit in here to eat, but typically I don't eat here. I eat back in my study. But um, And after dinner, uh, it, sometimes before dinner and after dinner, I take that uh, little vacuum and vacuum, and then I wash the floor after. Uh, uh, part of the floors in the hallway I wash before dinner, and then the kitchen area where the birds are I wash after dinner. And um, It has to be vacuumed and washed. And on weekdays, I typically clean the bird cages. You do it on the weekends. And mm -hmm. on the days I clean the bird cages, I often will take the sweeper and run it across the room. Maybe you don't even notice I do that, but I typically do that because it's because it's such a mess by then. So um, yeah, anytime we eat in here, we have to vacuum. So we're what we're actually um, going to talk about today is the we're sweeper. Basically a full-time vacuumer. Yeah, and we're going to talk about the kind of sweeper that we use, and this isn't an ad for that kind of sweeper. It's called a shark. It's actually, this is uh, about the Discontinue. advantages. Yeah, the advantages and disadvantages of, uh, of using this and the uh, yeah, humorous, uh, aspects. <laughs> humorous aspects of it. Um, in the beginning, we just used a normal vacuum cleaner. Yeah, Eureka Upright, something like that, when my back was good. Yeah, and so why did we stop using that? Well, my back got worse over the years. I think when we got married, my back wasn't that bad. But over the years, it's gotten progressively worse, and it became harder and harder for me to push that thing. Yeah. So we had to find something different. Yeah, those are, you know, a regular vacuum cleaner is kind of heavy, and it means uh, if you're cleaning an area um, four, five, six times a day, you don't want to have to be hauling something big out all the time. Um, so that wasn't wasn't any good. Um, I think we briefly, you don't remember it, but I'm pretty sure we briefly, or at least once or twice, to tried a broom. But at that time, um, we had a parrot named Stanley Sue who was terrified of brooms. She must have been caught with something that had a long handle that looked like a broom. Cause, well, and yeah, this, you know, just birds tend to not like anything right. with a handle. No, they don't. Maybe they think it's a, a snake-like or something. Something. I they don't never know. liked that. And at one time, even tried one of those little kind of um, hand vacs. I mean, just the generic name for those, I would mm -hmm. say, is Dirt Devil, all Something those. like that. And we've never had luck with those, have we? Well, I don't think I ever used it much because it doesn't have a long... You can't stand up and do it. you got to crawl around. Yeah, but back when your back was better, I think we had them, but the problem is they don't have much suction power, and uh, they get clogged up real easily, mm -hmm. and, you know, we have all these seeds and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that didn't get us too far. So one day I was at uh, Meyer, which is the store up the street, and I found this sweeper. It's not a vacuum. It's a sweeper, and I don't know who makes it. Maybe it's Shark, but it was called a Shark. Right. And um, you want to talk a little bit about that? About um, um, it's very lightweight. Yeah, we'll talk about the advantages. I don't know the exact poundage of it, but you just you can lift it with two fingers. Yeah, it's really here's Linda lightweight. with a bad back. So it was just like a dream come true. I absolutely love it. It's got a little pull-out tray that collects the dirt and stuff, and you can dump it. In all the time, and it, it's just not heavy at all. It's just like you know, pound and a half or so. I don't know how much it weighs. And it's cordless. Really, it's cordless. 
swivels around. You can flatten it down to go underneath things. I absolutely love that vacuum. There's only one little problem with it. It's um, we'll, cheap, cheaply made. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to that. But um, but it, as far as using it, it's very easy to use, and I really like it. Yeah, it's so lightweight. There used to be a brand that my sister had called a swivel sweeper. It was like the shark. similar to that. And the thing about it is, it is not a vacuum. What it is, that's why it's so lightweight. It, has, it doesn't have the suction. No, no suction. It's got these rotating brushes. And unlike a vacuum, the shark excels at picking up wet stuff and big objects. So it'll take up if peanut if shells, peanut like that. shells, or Bella throws co corn all over the so floor. So brush that um, the shells or whatever into this little tray. And cat hair. It's absolutely wonderful for picking up cat hair or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to take a break. We know uh, you're on the edge of your chair wanting to hear more about our uh, trials and tribulations and triumphs with the shark. And yeah, you we'll don't get exciting fare like this every day of the week. No, you don't. But uh, we'll be right back uh, after this word from our sponsor. <laughs> What Were You Thinking? We'll be right back after Bob gets the ducks out of his living room. Don't go away. Greetings, human. What planet am I on? Welcome to Pet Planet. Here's a copy of Pet Planet Magazine, Florida's most informative and fun pet resource magazine. It features heartwarming stories and informative articles from local and national pet experts. Excellent. Pet Planet Magazine offers Operation Planet Rescue, helping rescued pets find new homes. And it's available at 500 locations in South and Central Florida and 24-7 on the Internet at PetPlanetMagazine.com. If you're out and about with your pet, you may be featured in Paparazzi, candid pictures of you and your pet. For up-to-date pet-friendly events, activities, and pet-related services and products, Pet Planet Magazine is your final destination. I shall take this magazine home with me. Back to your home planet? No. To my condo in Boca. Pet Planet Magazine. Check them out at www.petplanetmagazine.com or 352-394-8578. It's out of this world. Hey, ready to take a walk? Not just you, but the whole family. It's the 2009 Whisker Walk, Sunday, June 7th from 11 to 3 at the Lancaster Fairground in Lancaster, Massachusetts. Pet owners and animal lovers walk to lend a paw to benefit the animal shelters and pet charities they love. Come see exhibits, demonstrations, educational programs, special attractions, product giveaways, entertainment, auctions, raffles, food, fun, and things for adults and kids to see, do, and buy, both human and pet related. Whisker Walk 2009, a fun day for everyone. For more information, log on to whiskerwalk.org. Here's the story of a lovely lady who is bringing up three very lovely gulls. Join us every week on Wings and Things and get a bird's eye view of everything there is to know about pet birds and how to make your frequent flyer a happy camper. Wings and Things. That's the way we became the birdie bunch. Only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, ducks are in the pond, rabbits in his hutch, and monkeys... Ow! Oh, in my car! Oh, okay, well, I go check my insurance policy. We'll turn you back over to Bob. Okay, hi, uh, this is Bob Tart and Linda Tart. And we're back with what were you thinking? And we're talking about uh, cleaning up after our birds. And we're also talking about a cordless sweeper that we've been using uh, called the Shark. And again, this is not an ad because we're talking about positive and bad. and bad. And we talked about the good. This is a lightweight sweeper. It's battery charged, so you don't have to worry about plugging it in. And it really is good at uh, picking up a lot of odd, wet, large objects. I think on the package they even showed uh, spilling nuts and bolts on the floor and it would pick them up and I don't think that's an exaggeration. I think it would pick them up pretty easily. It would pick up a bolt? Not that They showed on the um, uh, package, you yeah. know, I mean you wouldn't be inch long nuts and bolts right. but little ones and right. I think it'd probably pick them up. But uh, now let's um, 
let's talk about let's talk about uh, start to talk about the problems we've had and what we've tried to do to, to solve well, them. Well, I, I used to use it on our carpet in the living room, and I really liked it for that. It fluffed it up real nice. I, I think I used to do that every day as well as the rug and uh, floor linoleum in here. Yeah. But eventually it got, well, what would it be, like four or five months? Not even that. Three, four months. The handle breaks down at the swivel base where it goes into the body of the vacuum. You're going along nice as pie, and all of a sudden the whole the handle breaks, and you can't fix it. No, you can't. And, and you're just stuck. And I, I've taken uh, them apart before. I am not mechanically inclined, I should mention that. But if there's an easy solution to things, I can usually fix it. And I realized as soon as I took these things apart that the joint where this thing swivels so well is not made of metal it's this cheap plastic joint and you know it wasn't just you who broke one well I didn't break one you had maybe one or two different um, cleaning ladies who help you out have broken oh, them yeah. isn't that right yeah and I thought you could just super glue it back together you but can't because it has to swivel yeah because it has to swivel it's not strong enough with super glue and it'll break right immediately right. so that that's a serious problem the other problem we had with them which was uh, a little less serious is that uh, it comes with a rechargeable battery, but yes. we found after time that... Uh, That's about a day and a half of three times a day use. Right. But, um, it and starts so to wear down. You has these three lights that show you when it's at full power, but you can put it with your toe, flip it one time, or click it one time, and it goes down to the two level. I've used it on the two level for quite some time. It doesn't run down so fast. But after it gets down to a certain point, there'll be a blinking light to show you that it's going to go completely. Pretty soon. Yeah, it's so it's then that lets you know. Hi, Hi ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I'm leaving. <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> I'm going to be done soon. So, um, you know, theoretically, all you do is you plug it into the wall overnight, and then the next day you're good to go. And this is fine for people like my sister who have the original swivel sweeper, who um, uses it once a week, maybe. Yeah, or even if you, if you say once a day, a that's different than a product you use six times a day every day. And so we found after a while that I would recharge the battery and uh, it would maybe last one time cleaning because the batteries after a while don't hold a charge anymore. Right. And um, you have I, to charge it overnight, don't you? Or is it yeah, four pretty hour, much. Four or five pretty hours? much. And so um, at that point we didn't know what to do because we didn't realize that, um, I'll, I'll get to this, uh, but we didn't realize that we could buy extra batteries for the shark. But, um, we decided um, we were so tired of the handles breaking and the battery running down that uh, we thought, uh, let's try and get a different kind of sweeper and see if it works better. So I tried to get a swivel sweeper, and they just stopped making them. And then Linda, I forget what company I made I found this. a place over by the chiropractors. So it was a vacuum center. And they suggested this little orange-looking thing. I won't say the name. I can't even remember. I what don't the name remember was. who makes it. But it it was um, non. It was battery operated too. But it, it didn't make a noise. I don't think it made a. I don't know if it was battery operated. Yeah. Even. Oh yeah. Was it? Yeah. It didn't make a sound. I don't think. <laughs> well, that's because the motor wasn't very good on it. What was your nickname for this little doggy? Suit? What was that? Doggy. Uh huh. And why did you call it that? Because it's doggy. <laughs> because it has no power whatsoever. And it gets clogged on a pebble of sand. It's just Here, a we'll terrible little bit. Here's, um, He'll show you what here's how the sounds. shark sounds. Okay. Pretty healthy sound. Uh huh. But uh, doggy. I, I just don't remember it having a doggy, sound at all. And you'd get a little. Mm, just anything just, at all. Yeah, it was. It was it's a very unhappy sounding vacuum. It's yeah. not happy that it's a vacuum. No. It uh -uh. wanted to be something else. I think it wanted to be a non powered sweeper. Or something. <laughs> I thought it was. My memory of it is that it was non powered. Yeah. So suddenly we found a couple things that we thought were going to change our life. And first of all, was I was able to find um, extra batteries online. So it I was started. a happy day, I'll yeah, tell you. Yeah, I started buying new batteries for our sharks. And I also got a um, kind of a premium battery charger. It was supposed to prolong the lives of our batteries, but it's this real crazy kind of thing where I have to take the battery out and clip the charger on it with alligator clips. And apparently that sends interference in the electromagnetic the spectrum. The TV screen doesn't look it, good. It used to be before we had our satellite hookup in here. 
if I was just recharging a battery upstairs, there'd be static on the TV, and our favorite radio station was just a hiss. All the electronics in the house were affected. Yeah, so that was nice. But anyway... Um, so we trade off. When one runs out, I set it in the bedroom on his dresser. He takes it upstairs, and when it's charged, he puts it on the entertainment center, and I know that I can go there and get one that's charged. Finally, though, the last shark we had in the house, the handle broke. So I said to Linda, okay, I'll just order a couple more because we found a place on the web that sells reconditioned sharks. Which was a dream. Yeah, you know, and they're about half price. So I ordered two more reconditioned sharks. So we got a house full of sharks by this time. Probably. Well, they're all broken. And so I ordered two new ones, and they were advertised under the same name as what we have now, or what we had, and they had the same picture. But what happened when we got our new sharks? That new thing we got? Yeah. It's about half the size. It's a new model. It's about model. half the width. They've discontinued the model that we've always used. The new one is... About half the size. It's about the size of doggy. It's like something your five-year-old would use to mm -hmm. play with. And it is so lightweight that the old you shark... You blow on it, it'll fall over. Yeah, the old shark uh, feels like, like... a monster. A monster, like an, a huge Electrolux vacuum cleaner. Yeah, yeah. And it just has this little purr to it. Mm. Tiny little sound. And um, to recharge it, I can't figure out how you get the batteries out anyway. I mean, we can plug it into the wall and recharge it, but right away I started worrying about um, once we start going through these batteries. What are we going to do? Then? I think you they sell extra batteries online, but I think you're going to have to take. I'm going to have to take a pliers and wrench them out of there. Yeah, these these vacuums are meant to be thrown away at the end of like three months. Yeah, so we're just very unhappy because this vac the sweeper that. Probably most of you who have birds and don't have as many birds as we have, you'd be happy using this all oh, day. Just a and so now dream. it's um, discontinued. And uh, the new version of the shark, which I like to call the minnow, because it's, or actually I call it peewee. 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 Uh, it's sort of a, a curse, curse upon us. <laughs> so. But we did, we did finally arrive at sort of a happy solution. Got our handyman over here. Yep, our, our handyman our, Gary our was Our brilliant over. handyman Gary figured out some way to make that swivel part uh, rework again. Yeah, we, I don't know why, but we kept the broken handles and we kept our old sharks and uh, I happened to just out of desperation uh, show it to up. Gary and Gary said, well, I think I can find something. I think I can put something together. So we gave him one to take home and uh, Lo and behold, he uh, brought it back, and um, we're using it. it. We're using it, and I expect it's stronger than ever. Yeah, pee wee sitting over in the corner sulking, but uh, yeah. it's too bad. Yeah, we've got two of those darn pee wees, and in fact, one of the pee wees they sent us didn't even Had have the right handle. Didn't even have the right handle parts. Yeah, so, so we're back to using the sharks again. And we're going to have Gary repair all of them, and so I think soon we're going to have an entire armada of <laughs> what do you call a, a, a school of fleet. minnows, a fleet of sharks, a school of sharks in the basement. <laughs> so. So, um, anyway, uh, if you have any good suggestions on cleaning up after birds... Um, yeah, any vacuum that you have that weighs absolutely nothing that works wonderful. Yeah. Or if you have some suggestion for a parrot that throws his uh, food constantly, like, that's the trouble I'm having with Dusty later. Yeah, that's right. And um, with good. all of them. Yeah. yeah. So, I guess that's about it for this week. This is a little shorter show than usual. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Anything? All right. So, thanks everyone to uh, uh, thanks to everyone who listened, and uh, thanks for our producer Mark, who will vacuum up any mistakes that we made in the show. I hope. We'd like to hear your pet cleanup stories. Yeah, yeah. Whether you have birds or lizards. Doesn't matter. Any something else. Yep. And uh, birds are getting loud enough here. I think they're drowning us out anyway. So I'll say. Yes, we better. Okay. Say bye bye. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. Everybody. bye. Thinking about buying a monkey? How about a ferret or a skunk? Then check out the show that will answer the burning questions, where do you get them? What do you feed them? How do you take care of them? And most of all, what were you thinking? With exotic pet expert and author Bob Tart, every week on demand from PetLifeRadio.com.